probably shouldn't say this. I'm sure I'll get in trouble, but I can honestly say I licked that car when it was there <laughs> because I was so excited. I had to, I just said, you know what? I'm going to do something that I can say that I did. And I licked that car, but I did some canvas art of one of the screenshots of from bullet with him doing, just coming around a turn with the tire smoke and the whole bit. It was just this huge moment for me of not only hearing that, okay, your art is good enough that I can recognize my own father in, um, but that I got to do it while the car was actually there on premise. Unbelievable. I licked it. I licked that car. <laughs> okay. Okay. Ever... okay. Okay. I got to ask. The, yeah, go ahead. I got to ask. Because I, I, maybe I'm missing something, but when you say licked, do you literally mean licked or is that you, yes. you actually, or is I that actually the slang the or fender. something? I, I can tell you it's on the passenger side at the fender corner right by the headlight. Because <laughs> I had to do something really quick. My hands were full and I wanted to say that I touched that car before security was there. So. The, the only clean spot on the car is right there, right? Yes. Yeah. Before COVID. Okay. Before so, COVID, yes. Before COVID, I was safe. Everybody, it's often been said, if done properly, classic cars could be described as a work of art. And part of that can be accomplished with a paintbrush. Yes, even though this isn't a car, and I hopefully this this is oh, it looks like it's a broken glass, is what it is. Anyway, yeah. uh, this was done by none other than the man with the beard, Johnny Martinez. Yeah, that guy. Striper extraordinaire. And uh, today on this episode of Talking About Cars with Randy Cardoon and Hot Rod Bob Beck, I'm Randy Cardoon, that's Hot Rod Bob Beck, and, and right there, that's Johnny Martinez, and joining us, of course, Emily Brancher is uh, right there, and Emily is also a person who does stuff like this. You know, it's beginning to strike me that I buy way too many bottles at Johnny's house. <laughs> but these are very cool and well done, and we're going to talk a little bit about pinstriping and the history of pinstriping and their personal history about pinstriping. And uh, let's start things off with Johnny. When we talk pinstriping legends, uh, okay, so I was looking this up, actual research done by the host. And it's like, okay, I came upon Von Dutch, which is obvious, oh boy. Uh, locally in Southern California, Von Hotrod which we see him in a lot of places. And for some reason, it didn't strike me, but Ed Roth is also credited for being a huge pinstriper. I've seen his car. Well, I saw his car. He was uh, calling on one of my clients one time, and he had a Volkswagen he would drive. And there wasn't a piece of panel or metal on that car that did not have striping of sorts. And uh, he, he was an expert at that. When he got out of the car business for a while, he was actually a sign painter at Knott's Berry Farm. Mm -hmm. I did not know that. Wow. Did yeah, that was his main vocation. I was just going to say, did he pinstripe at Knott's Berry Farm? Yeah, he did. If signs. He did all the uh, antique looking signs and such that were surrounding the buildings and things of that nature. That's what he went to. And that was uh, kind of uh, a situation. He had some issues in life. And that plus a, a remarriage got him uh, all sorted out. And that was before the resurgence, Roth and rat things and things of that nature. Mm -hmm. And it, it really cleaned him up, so to speak, and got him focused back on his art. Well, yeah, well, rumor has it, you can still go and find a whole bunch of them if you go to Knott's Berry Farm. That's the, that's the myth going around is that you can go and actually still find some of his work today. It's kind of cool. Yeah. Really? Oh, I'll have to check. If you're ever on the way to Knott's Berry Farm, uh, go ahead and take pictures and send them to us here at Talking About Cars. Uh, that would be interesting. Um, or email them to us at uh, our locations. Why it's talkingaboutcars at gmail.com or hotrodbob01 at yahoo.com because as we all know, Bob's about as big as Yahoo as they come. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Hey. Yahoo. <laughs> Thank you. This is what our show is. We just yeah. have way too much fun zapping each other. But um, Johnny, when you got started, uh, were these guys one of the reasons you got started? Or what got you started in pinstriping? You know, there was a guy that striped all of my cars or my motorcycles uh, back in the day. 
a guy that I was friends with, uh, you know, barbecues and parties and things and other things we used to do. And, uh, and he was a friend of mine and he was a pinstriper and I would just see him do all this stuff, but I didn't, I didn't, I guess I just didn't tune in. I like cars, but I didn't tune into that so much as later. And then, uh, I started hiring him to do things for me. And again, we were close friends. So I would watch him when he'd come to my house or I'd go to his house. But it was um, it was what he did that just intrigued me. Then I was going to car shows and I was seeing other pinheads at these shows. And I'm going, man, I want to learn how to do that one day. And uh, and he's the one that actually inspired me. You know, it wasn't even Dutch or any of those guys, you know, in the beginning. And then when I got into it, then I started meeting other artists. And I started doing stuff that these known guys, you know, did. And I really started to begin to understand the moods and the concept. My my striper would sometimes say, uh, come back Thursday. You know, it would be a Tuesday. Come back Thursday. I says, well, are you busy? He goes, no, come back Thursday. And I didn't ever understand that. And, uh, and you got to kind of, well, me personally, you got to kind of get into the moment to pull something off and and I might do something two or three times and I stop and I put it away and I go away from it for an hour and I come back, boom, I nail it. So I was learning a lot of things as well as trying to find who my mentor might be. But it was a guy named Rick Grendel uh, who was my mentor, no longer with us. And that's how I, how I, you know, got into it. I think today's word of the day, our vocabulary word for this episode of talking about cars, pinheads. Yes, pinheads, nickname for a pinstriper. You don't have to like be afraid that they'll retaliate later if you call them a pinhead. So yeah, no, that's, that's what they call them. That's what they call them. <laughs> and you can call them a striper, but just make sure it's not a stripper. Just say That's right. Um, that's well, it. Well, I have that problem over here about that word. Uh, <laughs> yeah. so, you know, I you think know. up here in Washington, we may have stripper stripers. I don't know. Stripper Maybe stripper, that's something new know. in the car industry. The that's why pinhead's easier to think about it <laughs> yeah pinhead's easier to spell yes a little bit yeah <laughs> on this though after i got into it i think emily might be able to agree with me on this you put yourself in a, in a light doing this kind of work and you you almost kind of got to be careful now with behavior because everybody starts to know you and you know you can get you can get eight ball by association over one thing and i think you know you randy bob in the same situation you know we're in that light now so uh everything we try to do uh emily and i have pinstripe together and everything we try to do is real positive and real fun and you know productive and so you know that's kind of where it all ends up you know unlike dutch back in the day you know there's a lot of <laughs> stories about him yes yep well that, that was a different time in a different era um so Emily, tell me, was there anybody that you look, looked up to in the pinstriping world that got you into it? Or how did you become a pinstriper? Yeah, it's it's interesting because I remember growing up and, you know, back in the magazine days and the newspaper days and the auto trader days, I, I had this collection of all this artwork that I liked from all these different car shows and these pictures that I inadvertently realized I was taking of the car paint and of pinstriping and of styling. And I remember saving all those and I actually went to school for body and paint um, a number of years ago, not going to disclose that. Uh, but I went to school for that and they had a, a, a class um, that was pinstriping. And I remember thinking about it as something that I God, I can't do that. Are you kidding? Only the pros can do that. Only Von Dutch can do that. Only hot dog Pete can do that. Only these amazing greats that were out in the world. And I didn't think it was humanly possible for someone like me to do something. So I tried it on a whim as a joke and it kind of took off from there on, you know, not realizing how welcoming the entire community is. And I could meet some of those greats, you know, in time and how like, seriously, they just opened up their arms to me and said, oh, cool. You're into being a pinstriper. Come on, we're going to show you everything that's going on. So I, I never thought of it as an art form that I could follow and, and get into um, by seeing these greats, like you're saying, the Von Dutch's, the Ed Roths, um, you know, even some of the female, you know, Candy Striper, I remember seeing her stuff back in the day and just going, God, I wish I could be like that. Um, but it was kind of 
more momentous of meeting a few. I think Johnny will relate to that. Meeting a few pinstripers and realizing that they want you to be interested in the art form that they do. And here, we're going to do everything we can in order to help you along along the way. Um, and that was kind of what really pushed me into it. So it's kind of a mixture of both. How important was it for you to have a, a woman to look up to that was already doing that kind of thing as far as you deciding, hey, that's what I want to try? You know, I, I get asked that question a lot. And I got to say that I think it was less... Seeing another girl do it, don't get me wrong, is amazing and I love it. And I know a lot of the girls personally that pinstripe and I think every one of them is going to tell you that art isn't sexist in a way. You know what I mean? We just see cool art and we want to replicate it. And that's awesome. Um, being a hot rod girl in general, um, you know, you just are, you aren't. You're either into it or you're not and you got to be passionate about it. And if you are, you're part of the club. And it's, it doesn't matter where you come from, race, creed, religion, sex, any of it. It's just that you're into cool cars or just that you're a pinstripe, or just that you want to actually dedicate the time to learning a craft. So seeing a, another female pinstriper was big, but not as much as how welcoming the entire hot rod community and pinstriper community was to me. Well, that's good. And one of the things I've noticed is I've known Johnny for what, 10, 15 years now. Nice. And I've watched what he started doing mm -hmm. to what he does today. And I don't think he ever thought he had the artistic ability. Yeah. And all of a sudden from doing it, you pick up more, you see what other people are doing and you enhance that and make it your own. Uh, he does his panels and the, uh, and the bowling pins, for example, that each one is more extravagant and detailed than the other. Yeah, exactly. And, yeah, and he does a lot of the glass too, but most of them are full glass bottles. Mm -hmm. not the one not the disappearing ones and the crazy <laughs> thing is, right not the, not the broken looking ones yeah, yeah exactly um, <laughs> the crazier thing too about the art form like like you're just saying we progress and and alter our art as we go along and to a lot of people they're going to see that it's just a whole bunch of lines and you know you, you might have coach liners that are they're really just running straight lines but every pinstripe will tell you you can see another artist and pick them out by their pinstripes like it's to a lot of people, it's just doodles, but Johnny, I've seen Johnny's style over the last few years grow exponentially and I can still pick his out out of a crowd. And that's pretty dang cool. You can see certain coach liners that'll run two lines, you know, two lines all the way down a Cadillac and they're spaced so perfectly and so evenly done. You can go, oh, I know that so-and-so's work. Oh, I know that so-and-so. It's, it's just really impressive. The further we go along, the more we kind of differentiate ourselves and perfect that talent. And it's kind of really cool to see, actually. I mean, seriously, Johnny, I was just looking at some of your work the other day and it, well done, well done, sir. <laughs> Thank you, I appreciate that coming from you. Uh, real quick, Randy, you know, uh, I, I striped at the Classic Auto Show in 2018. 2019, they reached back out to me. I mean, personally, uh, I think that it was Motor Trend then that was that was doing that. that. And uh, and they asked me if I knew uh, a female pit driver that I could bring in because they wanted the female people. We were there to do demonstrations and kind of let them know what we do, what it's all about. And they wanted a a, a, a female. They wanted a, a lady, a girl. It didn't matter what that could pinstripe to show this craft. And uh, Emily was <laughs> the first one I thought of because I've seen her at Santa Maria. I've seen her around Grand Nationals. And she's more than seasoned in this in this craft. So, uh, and that was all part of it. You know, that was all, you know, progressing and learning and growing. And I've seen her. Uh, it, you know, don't don't settle with the last piece you did. Right. Old timer told me, try to beat that that last piece you did. You know. Yep. And we were at the same show, uh, and I I don't know if you remember. We walk, I walked by a few times to give him a hard time, but we were our booth was actually right down from yours on the opposite side of the building or oh. whatever they had us in. It was just a covered area. Yeah. And I was just amazed to see what you guys were doing. And I remember as a kid seeing cars with pinstriping. The first one that I remember was Tommy Ivo's tea bucket. Mm -hmm. And that was like you said, straight lines, basically. It was just mm -hmm. following the contour of, of the vehicle panel. to enhance them. Yep. And then it got more flamboyant with the customs and such with the striping on the trunk around it. And he's done this on my car. 
uh, around the keyholes and around the door ha uh, handles and things of that nature that became more extravagant, but also highlighted more of the car's lines or took you away from a specific straight line and made you see the contour of the car. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And it's, and it's crazy the difference it'll make too. The, the funny thing and interesting thing about the art of, especially when you want to start talking about customs, like let's say a flame job, the difference of the pinstripe and the outline to, uh, to flames can drastically alter the look of it. And that Johnny, I mean, seriously, you can contest to this. You pick the wrong color and you might screw up the whole paint job, but at the same time you add the right one and it takes it from here to here real quick. So it's, it's really kind of impressive. Yeah. John got you in my flames on my, on my coup uh, or the second time around. Johnny said, no, these are a little plain. We got to change this. And I go, what are you going to do? And yeah. I went over to his house and he added just a little bit of blue to the tips it made the flames pop even more. And but yeah, uh, suddenly it, they're it, dancing and you didn't even know they could. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Then he put a brush in my hand and I was able to stripe the louvers. That yes, was about as did. far as it goes. Two inch wide louvers. That was it. I got the line almost straight. Louvers is almost a dirty word in the pinstripe world. I'll tell you that much right now. <laughs> okay. I can always bleep it out. <laughs> oh. <laughs> And by the way, Johnny, thank you for the compliments. That means a lot to me. When you invited me to go do that show, it that was seriously a pretty huge marker in my little notch well, in my belt there. So thank you're, you. You're a big deal in this industry, uh, Emily. Whether you know that or not, we like to. We like. Well, I know some people that like to like to think that they're big big news. <laughs> right. I uh, I I can step away from myself, and and I mean I I I've been striping ten years. That's it, yeah. ten years. And I picked up a brush at age 60. I'm 70. And, uh, you wait, know. Uh, you picked up the brush for the first time at the age of 60? At age 60, I could see straight. I wasn't shaking. And I said, I can do this. So, um, you know, I've had to play catch up with some of the greats in this industry. And Emily is one of them people, Randy. How Thank long you, does it take? And I'd like to answer from both of you guys. I mean, Johnny, obviously you're a late bloomer, if you will. Um, how long did it take for you to really get to a point where you were comfortable and felt proficient enough to display your wares as you do? And and after you're done, Emily, the same question. I am going to say, I still haven't. <laughs> so I'm curious to see what Johnny's going to say. <laughs> you know, I, I sold my first piece that somebody asked me, what are you doing with that? I'd like to buy it in 14 months. Wow. And inside of, I would say, two years, I was painting with Von Hotrod in his booth. I think it was around that. I might have it wrong a little bit. And I no longer felt like I was in his shadow. I was I was Johnny Martinez. I was me. And I was doing what I know how to do. And I had my niches and my little, you know, syncrasies and like that. So 14 months, I sold my first piece within maybe two years. I was striking with guys like Von Hotrod, who's a very private person. I even went to his house and he gave me the full dime tour of his house and pointed out everything that I was not allowed to take pictures of. <laughs> and uh, and I was in two years about, the, about that. So there you have it. Huh. Wow. Emily, how about you? How, how, what was your startup? Um, so like I said, I went to school for body and paint, um, when I lived out in Florida and they had a specialty course on pinstriping done through DuPont at the time. Um, and a friend of mine took it because again, I didn't think that it was something that I could ever tackle or I could ever accomplish. And but how long I, did it take before you felt proficient at it or you felt yes. good about it to display? Or as Johnny said, if anybody has ever bought any of your, uh, um work uh so i i fiddled around with it and i goofed around with it for years i would say seriously probably a good five or six years of just doing it from time to time and doing little pieces here and there and i will be honest with you my mom bought i think everything i owned and i mean <laughs> bought because she was so proud of me and i come from a, a super hot rod family but it was honestly not until i got invited there's a funny story by accident um to gnrs to stripe with all those stripers and uh, 
Grand I National was, Roadster Show. Yeah, Grand National Roadster Show. And uh, I was pulled aside by a couple, like, you know, like Tom Kelly and Hot Rod Pete and Marshall and a couple great painters. And they all told me, you know, you got an act for this. You got to go. And I think it was in that moment that I was like, oh, this doesn't have to just be a hobby. I can actually do this and I can have fun with this and I can grow. And it was, it was really that moment for me. It was the first time I got invited to Grand National Roadster Show. What year was that? I don't, I, lady doesn't want to tell her secrets. I think that was like 2014, I think is, is okay, about so was your first time at Grand Nationals. Now, yeah. you're on the, are you on the West Coast now or are you back in Florida? No, on the West Coast now. I'm, I moved back uh, about 2008, 2009. It's time for our uh, every show version of what was your first car, Emily Bradshaw? <laughs> My first car was a 55 Packard Clipper, actually. Big old like bullet of a car. My grandparents and my parents said, well, she's only going to hurt other people. She won't be getting hurt herself. So. <laughs> God, it's almost like you bought a car like that from the U.S. Army or something. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. It was overstock, exactly. Where, 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 was that a family member's handed down to you or what was... Well, so it was actually, my grandpa was clairvoyant enough to know that I was going to be into cars. Um, he we helped do one of the, my first motor swaps was in his garage. So, um, he, a neighbor of his had it for sale. Um, and I joked with him for years because the guy was offering his mini Cooper or the Packard. And I said, well, why didn't you take the mini Cooper? And he goes, um, come on, <laughs> really? I know what you were going to do with that kid. Sorry. So I got a boat instead. <laughs> mm -hmm. I loved that car though. I got to say that thing served me so well. I actually had AC, and factory fitted seat belts, believe it or not, for 55. Oh. It was very ahead of its time. Oh. Johnny, uh, we talked about this subject uh, when we had you on some moons ago, but go ahead and re-answer it for us. What was your first car? My first car was a 57 Chevy. It was a 210 uh, post car. Uh, it was at a gas station for sale. And uh, my dad uh, was gonna help me buy a car and I wanted that one. Had cheater slicks raised in the back like they did back in the day. And he thought that that wasn't an appropriate car for me, <laughs> but I did. And uh, I always felt like I had the last word, man, was I stupid. <laughs> and uh, and uh, he helped me buy that car and it had a 283 with a three speed. And it, I even put a Sig Arison cam decal on the window to make people think I had a Sig Arison cam. I think it just wasn't idling right, but it sure <laughs> sounded good. But that was my first car. Uh, it was, it served me well. It was a lot of fun. Hmm. These youngsters, they had these new cars. I don't understand. I know. Well, Bob, we might as well mention ours only because, uh, we're, we're back on the show and, uh, we don't have time. You got too many cars. <laughs> no, 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 first, our car, first car, first car, first car. What was your first car, Bob? 1849 Dodge paid $25 for it. Uh, it was sitting on a used car lot over by Van Nuys Airport in Southern California. We were driving by to go to Jack in the Box for dinner. I was 15 and I go, wow, look at all those old cars. Well, behind the, that was a junkyard. So these were the ones that were running, uh, barely. And uh, talked my mom into it. Wow. And uh, it, it had a fluid drive, they called it gyromatic drive. Well, I didn't know what that was. I thought <laughs> I taught myself how to drive a stick. You couldn't install it. It was a clutch with a torque converter with a three-speed automatic or three-speed manual transmission. The only reason you used the clutch pedal was to shift. Yep. And I thought I taught myself how to drive a stick. I wasn't stalling it. It was great. It was doing this, and then it blew the engine up. <laughs> Real quick, I'm sure. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And how long did you have that car? About uh, right until I got my driver's license. I blew it up before I even had a license. I would drive it in and out of the driveway. And when my mother was at work, I would take it out and drive it. I didn't look any different from the time I was 15 to the time I was 16. I still looked small and puny. Um, but so I take it out and I drive it up and down the street. So I drove it up the street. And I went to drive it back and boom, I uh, threw a rod. Now I did nurse it back into the driveway, into the garage and in the, in the apartment building we lived in. And as soon as I stopped it, it puked. Yeah. All the oil came out and it was done. And uh, I got 
in trouble with the apartment manager for leaking all the oil, but I cleaned it up. It was done, and so was the deposit for uh, the cleanup deposit yeah. for your yeah. mom. And I sold it to a wrecking yard for twenty-five dollars, which is what we paid for it. So we were we were okay. And then I went to work at the gas station on the corner next to the hotel or next to the apartment building I lived in. And my next car was a nineteen fifty-nine Simca. And I uh, I worked there to pay for the car. Wow, that was a, that was a Chrysler that sold in Chrysler dealerships, wasn't it? Yeah, it was a Chrysler car built in France. Right. Oh, so right. it was one of their uh, affiliate companies. It was a four-cylinder, four-speed on the column. And uh, by this time, I was confident I knew how to drive a stick, even though I'd never done one, really. And, man, that car was great until I shortened it by meeting a Buick. <laughs> what happened? I like that description. I'm meeting a Buick. I like it. <laughs> And by the way, just to keep this clear, it wasn't Mr. Simca meet Mr. Buick. It yeah. wasn't that yeah. formal. It was probably and it happened a lot quicker, I'd imagine. Yeah, he stopped. I didn't. Oh, oh. Nice. And, uh, I'll, blame it, I'll blame it on my car affection, my, my craziness of cars. There was a famous Corvette Custom sitting in a shell station. And I go, wow, look at that. Oh, got him. I broke his taillight and crushed the front end of my car. At least you said it wasn't a pair of legs walking down the sidewalk, and that's what caused it. Oh, no, my girlfriend was sitting alongside me, so I didn't do that. There you go. I don't think it mattered. We still looked. Yeah. Right. <laughs> I was going to say, how many of us have not had that kind of accident before? Right, exactly. Exactly. My, my 86 uh, T Bird was never the same after that. Yeah, I completely get it. By the way, just to fill in the gap, yes, uh, my first car was a 64 Dodge Polara, ironically, <laughs> kind of like this one. It just appeared magically. Um, uh, so it's, in fact, this one here is not the one, but it's like one of my old cars that I sold. And it actually went to Sweden, which is where this is. And this was my car after the guy took control of it and put blue stripes on it and and by the way you can tell let's see if i can point this over here see that yeah, right there the, yeah this is how i knew it was my car that is a chrysler performance west club logo mm -hmm. and i left it on the car when i sold it forgot to take it off and it went to sweden and i was looking one day uh, somebody had one of our friends bob and i's mine's friends from sweden I asked him to see if you could find it. He did online, and I knew it was it because of that logo right there. So that, that was interesting. And by the way, the previous car that I had in high school, it was a um, four-door, I, I want to say police mode, you know, sedan. And uh, one day we decided to dress it all up and put polka dots all over it because there was a car show at the high school. And I put polka dots on it and eyes over the windshield, over the um, lights, front lights, because I wanted to make it a funny car. Thank <laughs> you. Thank you. But I'm bummed. But I'm bing. And you know something? That was, that High was school bad. kids have no sense of humor. I did yeah. not get an award. Yeah. <laughs> like, what's up with that? I'm surprised but they didn't I call it Wonder Bread. I, right. <laughs> <laughs> I got to say, too, I. I got it. That, that paint job, the stripes on those that they did on this Polaris and stuff like that always cracks me up because it was so still to this day, actually, is so controversial. You'll find so many people that love it for being something different of the era and a whole bunch of people that just think it's the most hideous thing that's ever existed. <laughs> and, well, well, to be fair, it's a Ram Chargers tribute car. So in other right. words, on the side, they've got Ram Chargers. Interestingly, it's a 63 on it, but it's a 64 Dodge. Yeah. Yeah. But um, but yeah, Aren't the stripes red. Yes. No, the it, stripes were the stripes are red on that Ram Charger, right? On the original. If I remember the right. original, yeah, I believe it yeah. was. This is wow, cool. I got a good memory. Dang. It works. You it know, works. you know, Randy, uh real quick, Bob and I talk Bob and I hang out quite a bit. We talk a lot about a lot of things, but sorry, Bob. And I don't know if Emily like can, can relate to this. <laughs> but uh, you know, this whole car scene is what got me into pinstriping. And then the pinstriping bounced me back to the car scene, but all the people and, uh, you know, I'm having such a good time with this whole, the whole realm of things. I've got history at Grand Nationals, which you may know. Uh, the only thing I haven't done there is pinstriped in the, in the, with these guys, you know, and 
Uh, there's a mutual friend of ours, Mike Donner, who's always saying, why don't you come in here? And I know, I keep this? seeing you on the wrong side of the table, Johnny. What are you doing? And, <laughs> and he says, there's some of these people here wondering what work why. for you to do, man. <laughs> you know, uh, and, and, but, you know, I, I guess I'm a social butterfly. I like to bounce around, you know, but uh, it, it's, it's a, such a cool thing, this whole thing. And it all hinges, you know, and thriving and it, it hinge to you guys, guys like you and, it's a lot of fun, man. It's the best thing I ever did in my life. It's cool to see the cars, and it's great to go back in time and relive the cars of our youth. But the people really is what makes yeah. this people drive me. what it is. Yeah. Yeah, we, we have a situation where no matter where we go, we run into someone, and it is car-related. Uh, Donnie and I went to a cruise, uh, a breakfast cruise, a cars and coffee one day, and there's a six degree of separation that we keep talking about. Where we'll know someone who knows someone that we know, but we don't know it. And yep. a prime example, we had breakfast with uh, some friends, and we're talking about this. And as we're out in the parking lot talking to people, we're talking to this one lady, and I see a friend in the background, and he's walking this way. And I wave. She goes, oh, you're saying hello to my nephew. <laughs> I've known him for years. I've known her. Yeah. She was involved in funny cars. He drives a dragster. I didn't know they were related. And I knew them both, but we had never been together or at the same time. So it's we, we keep running into that. Johnny and you, same thing. You and I meeting. Uh, I knew your traffic reporter. He and I had worked together uh, at a drag strip years ago. And then when he was on a different station as a DJ, I used to hang around with him in the studio. But we didn't know each other, but we both knew this other guy. Johnny and I have a number of different friends that we know, but we never saw each other. And my my wife, same situation, ran around in the same circles, but we didn't know each other. We had some, we had common friends, but we had never met. And it was kind of you know, funny thing. And she's car crazy like you are. Uh, she has a, a forty six Ford, and she had it before we got married. Nice. And she's keeping it flathead. Free speed on the column, tuck and roll, all the good stuff. And she's a traditionalist. And we kind of joke, we drive down the street and we'll see a car in a parking lot and both our heads go like this, you know, <laughs> squirrel. It's, you know. Is that where they rear end another Buick? You're right. <laughs> Haven't done that in a while, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what was the term? It's met a Buick, yes. It was yeah, met a Buick, yes. The back end of a Buick, yes. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I, I, I don't, I don't want to keep. One one really good thing, Randy, that I had an opportunity to do was pinstripe one of Von Dutch's original Leone motorcycles. I pinstriped, re-pinstriped what he had pinstriped oh, back right. in his day. And and talk about eerie feeling, you know. I think he would not be a happy man if he saw me doing that, you know. Our <laughs> banner just fell off. Our banner just he fell. wasn't a happy man anyways. Look out. <laughs> <laughs> but uh but I don't if I may, poster, poster fell, Bob. Is that what happened? Yeah, yeah. And but you know, I in in saying that, there happens to be something that I know Emily did that was real special. Uh, the Steve McQueen. Uh, oh, yeah, the Steve McQueen art. And I think you deserve a couple of minutes, and you need yes. to listen to this. This is seriously cool stuff. Yeah, I I do a lot of I I'm working on a piece panel that's here, um, but I do some panel art, um, and some canvas art that is uh I I dabbled in it I seriously I just tried it as a whim, um and Steve McQueen's car I mean if you guys remember that was the the year that the Mustang was at Grand National Roadster Show they were just right. talking about it was getting all the press leading up to the auction, um and they brought the car and it was right next to where we were pinstriping that year and i had heard about all of us and i was so excited you, know, you get the chills thinking about that car and you know i i'm not probably shouldn't say this i'm sure i'll get in trouble but i can honestly say i licked that car when it was there <laughs> because i was so excited i had to i just said you know what i'm going to do something that i can say that i did and i licked that car but i did some canvas art of one of the screenshots of from bullet with him doing just coming around a turn with the tire smoke and the whole bit um, and I remember um, it was his son that came by and said, I can tell you right now that that's my dad that's sitting in that car. And this was like the second one I'd ever done. Um, wow. And I remember, you know, I did some pinstriping off the side of it. Um, and it was just this huge moment for me of not only hearing that, okay, your art is good enough that I can recognize my own father in, 
um, but that I got to do it while the car was actually there on premise. Unbelievable. I licked it. I licked that car. <laughs> okay. Okay. You ever, okay. You I got to ask. The, uh, go ahead. I got to ask. Because I, I, maybe I'm missing something, but when you say licked, do you literally mean licked or is that you, yes. you actually, or is I that slang the for fender. something? I can tell you it's on the passenger side at the fender corner right by the headlight. Because <laughs> I had to do something really quick. My hands were full and I wanted to say that I touched that car before security was there. So. So the only clean spot on the car is right there, right? Yes. Yeah. Before COVID. Okay. Before so, COVID, yes. Before COVID. I was safe. <laughs> okay, so I have to ask this as long as we're on the subject of licking a car. Uh, on your board behind you, yeah. there are four words to your right. Yes. That one? Yes. <laughs> what, what, what is the, I wasn't going to mention it in, in, unless I had to, and <laughs> as long as we're on the subject, those four words, what is, what, what is that all about? Uh, suck, squeeze, bang, blow would be the four cycles in a motor. Thank you very much. But I'm bummed. Got it. <laughs> it's a, a work in peace. I mean, a work in progress that I'm working on. So, you know, you okay. got to demonstrate the four cycles. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> we almost lost almost the show. Up. There goes our GP or PG rating. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> there, there it goes. We lost that. Two and it's over. Okay. <laughs> and I'm the guy that looks like. That would be kind of where I live, you know, but uh, but I'm the innocent one. No, nope. yeah, you are. <laughs> you may the not be one guilty. In this situation, but... you're welcome. Yeah, well, he may not be guilty, but I don't know about innocent. I... <laughs> Good point. <laughs> oh boy. Okay, so guys, what uh, Emily? What's what car is in your garage right now? Uh, I am currently. Well, I have a lot, but <laughs> currently, I am working on restoring my '67 uh, Fairlane. So, oh, oh wow! We'll, uh, hopefully, turn that into a light daily driver, probably just a cruiser. But we plan on getting to the drag strip with it eventually. So, now, do you do a lot of the work also, or or do you just do the paint, or what do you do? Yeah, I do what I can. My husband, honestly, he we own a shop, a diesel repair facility down here in Oceanside, California, and uh, he does most of all my stuff. He also came from Top Fuel, from you know, uh, more of the years than he wants me to admit. Um, but he, so I rely on him and he has me do all the work. That was kind of the rule with this car. We've done several other ones together before. Um, we're currently working on a ramp truck for it as well. But That's my cool. rule with my car was you can tell me what all the best options to do would be, but I have to do it myself. So we're working on that. And then body and paints on mine. He doesn't get to touch the body. So very nice. Is that, so that's the only car you have? Uh, well, I've also got a 67, uh, F-250 that has an LS in it. Shockingly, I bought it like that. Um, and we also have, uh, let's see, our families, we all got a 67 notchback coupe uh, Mustang. We've got a 67 fastback Mustang and a 71 F-250 high boy and a 71 ramp truck that we're working on. So what's your daily driver? A uh, daily driver is actually a BMW. I'm ashamed to admit it, but I don't have any daily driver hot rods at the moment. So they're all projects. So I get to drive oh, the Beamer is my hoop. <laughs> Bring money with you. Yes. Yes. <laughs> and it's a diesel, believe it or not. I've actually got a 335D. So um, thank God for that. Because otherwise my diesel voice couldn't work on it for me. <laughs> all right. And Johnny, I know you uh, You have a, uh, a truck. You know, you guys, you guys in your... Park. You guys and you're more than one vehicle. I'm going to go home and burn everything I've got. <laughs> I feel so inadequate now. You know? Oh, come gonna on. Go, you're I'm going to go cool. sit outside. Yeah, you I didn't mean to make you feel inadequate, a, Johnny. Sorry. <laughs> you have more than just a truck. Come on. There's a great oh, story on. behind that. Yeah. Yeah. It, you know, honestly, Randy, it, it it does. It's got a great story, and I've been really lucky with it. You know? 1929 Ford Model A pickup. Yeah. And it's uh it's served me well. It's it's been in the light a lot of times. Because it's I got a grand national history. Yeah. And um uh, it's uh done a music video, uh, which is a whole story in itself another time. You'd love to hear it. Well, he, he was a stand in for ZZ Top. Who the artist was. Uh was the music artist? Yeah. Yeah. It was a it was a local band out of out of um Frazier Park, uh, oh. Zville is what they call themselves. 
and we did this out in the desert. Again, it's another story that you're going to want to hear one day. Um, but uh, it's okay, it's okay, Johnny. You can come back. <laughs> I had, somehow I had to do that. He's got such a long drive. Yeah, <laughs> but it's uh, but it's it's got history. I, I you know I won a uh, show at Barris. Uh, it's music video. It's been a magazine. Uh, it's done some pinup. Um, it's it's been a lot of places, you know, and and I've had really good luck with it, you know. Thing is, I'm at shows more without it now than I am with it because it's like getting it out, cleaning it up, and it's like, yeah, you know. But um, but it's uh, in fact, we're gonna take it out here next couple of few weeks. We're gonna go to the coffee thing, Again. and uh, yeah, out in Valencia, we're gonna drive our Model A's out there, and uh. But it's 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 a lot of fun. It's got its second life. Emily, um, Emily, uh, Cecile, Brad, mm -hmm. Cecile Buckmeyer. God, you see the effect you have on me, uh, Emily. Uh, Cecile Buckmeyer, and I think you met her. You've had yeah. her on the show. Yep. Yeah, she's the one that did the repaint on it. She was 26 years old at the time, which I wanted to say way back early on on this show. Uh, girl power. I believe in girl power. You know, girls can do anything and everything that we do. It was going to go into the uh, into the hangar at Costa Mesa, the McGuire hangar. I was invited. So we switched gears and painted it that color and brought the truck in. Nobody knew I had done that. Wow. And, uh, and that, boy, I'd say. What show was that, Bob? Do you remember? Yeah, Cruising for a Cure. Right, Cruising oh, for a Cure. Oh, yeah. Cruising for a Cure. And uh, so went into the hangar, and uh, it was a nice surprise for everybody. And uh and it just, you know, it's it's gone on from there to now, you know. So it's been successful. Yeah. Very. So you're working on this fair lane, Emily. What what's maybe the top three list of cars you want to be working on next one day? It it's funny you say that because this fair lane really was one of my dream cars for the longest time. I've always liked having like a nostalgic era coupe maybe like 28 29 coupe um but i i think everything i have is gearing me towards some sort of drag car um the 67 fastback that we've got is is we're pushing that way too with the um jericho and the whole bit so we're going full bore on that just got the cage done um i don't think i have another one and, and that's the first time i can say in my entire life i've said that i don't have another dream car probably because my family is so far away that it's still in dream written reality. It's not here yet. Um, but I, I don't know, probably a cruiser. It would be something that I'd look to. I wouldn't mind uh, some low rider cruiser, something a little bit more fun, slow speed, a uh, lot more art than anything else, just because it'd be something very far away from a drag car. I have I've always been a mixed girl, not like, you know, you'll find some people that are Mopar or Chevy or Ford only. And I've, always been kind of eclectic i've liked a little bit of everything and i find myself in this moment all fords at my house that's all i have is fords um so it'd be kind of neat to go to something like that yeah, we are <laughs> me i'm just gonna stay home and plant flowers <laughs> pick weeds <laughs> hold, on, hold on just a second Man, a little fiddle going on I'm settling away. In other words, what happened is the wife said she wants to spend some time with you, so you're stuck at home for a weekend before you can start hitting the car show. Oh, my know. God. She says, go play course. with your friends. Go. Yeah. <laughs> this time is green thumb. It's not paint. Yep. <laughs> Just this one time. I'm always interested in uh, how people look at their situations and what motivates them to keep improving, to keep going. And And why don't you, if I can get you guys to share a little bit about what motivates you in your uh, pinstriping career, Johnny? What what keeps you going? What uh, makes it interesting? You know, I've always said it's the people that drive me, but it goes a little further back. Um, when I had cancer, Randy, I couldn't, I was doing things in the beginning. I was doing hard chemo. And towards the end, I didn't have no more anything in me left to move. So I was not doing anything except sitting in a chair. I, I'm on my own, people tease me, I'm on my own lawns today, I don't have a gardener, and I often, and yesterday, in fact, my wife was was laughing at me, because I was outside doing things, and I was laughing, and I, I laugh at, by myself, 
and people probably look at me and go, there's something wrong with him. <laughs> but I go back to the cancer days when I couldn't, <clears throat> when I couldn't do anything. So now I've, you know, I, I, I beat it and I grounded and I got into the car scene and that went in a positive. And then I learned how to pinstripe and I started doing what I'm doing for some amazing people. And I've met entertainment people and became friends with them you know tv people and and rocks rock rock people alex van halen i had a chance to hang out with him and and i've and i've met people like that um and then i've met artists across the board emily in, in particular one and and the talent that she has that's what motivates me is the people and the fact that when i had cancer i couldn't do not only that i couldn't do anything so and I didn't I didn't know how to pinstripe back then, but if I had I wouldn't have been you know I wasn't doing anything so it goes back a little further before the people. Well, and although if you haven't seen the earlier edition when uh, Johnny joined me back on the um, original talking about cars, uh, your wife also was ill. He was diagnosed with cancer in two thousand. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, 2001 wow and then and then i was diagnosed in 05 sorry <laughs> well, i still get wound up but it was a tough deal to get wound up about johnny that's okay it, it was a tough deal you know and <laughs> and now i know people like you guys doing this kind of thing you know and the things that i do do and uh you know it's it's incredible you know what's dropped in my lap and you guys and the three of you and everybody else that's helped me. That's what motivates me now is the people, you know, more than more than anybody will ever know. What about you, Emily? I don't, I, wow, Johnny, thanks for sharing that. I didn't know that about you and your wife. So that's pretty inspiring and pretty neat um, to hear that that kind of pushed you on the back and push you through in a way to enjoy the good times so to speak so i just had to say that but i have to agree it's it's it really is the people um it's the people you meet along the way it's it's even the spectators i mean every pinstriper that's ever done it in a crowd can tell you that the things you'll hear are the same things over and over again like you know you must not drink any coffee you know i i can't even draw a stick figure i don't know how you do that how do you make it so symmetrical you you learn all these things but but then you'll you'll get these people that have come through and just be like wow that's so interesting and they ask you about it and they want to know the history about it and they want to know how'd you get into it just like what you guys are doing today and that kind of brings it all home in a way and art can be so subjective but it's really not for us i mean in this world and in this custom culture it's it kind of brings everybody together you know i've got little kids that are six seven years old asking me to try absolutely here's my brush let's go i'm going to show you a couple of things or you got like my um, daughter is turning 16. She'll be uh, driving hopefully at the end of this year and she's starting to get into it. And so she'll come into the studio with me and do a couple of things. I've actually got a piece over here that her and I did and that type of thing. And then you meet artists like Johnny and like our friend, Mike, and the, I've got friends in Japan from doing this. And it's just so, it kind of feeds your soul a little bit. You know what I mean? Not only do I get to have fun and be around hot rods all the time, but I also get to do this art and connect with people in a different way. And that just like, exactly like Johnny's saying, it just, it's that connection that really just kind of makes me keep on going. But trust me, there are times when I don't want to, when I'm super frustrated and I've wiped a panel for the second or third time that I just go, okay, I'm going to set this down and remember why I enjoy it again. <laughs> well, thank you guys for joining us. It's It's been great sharing with you. It's been great hearing your, uh, your stories about cars and all that and and don't forget talking about cars is indeed back for new location uh, right here on power tube tv and uh, we're going to have a new episode every wednesday that's when they're going to download it so we're going to have we've got a list of guests that are second to none and uh we don't have any nuns coming on the show but you get the idea no but that could be maybe there's a car loving nun out there that wants to join us <laughs> Thanks again to Emily Bradshaw. Thanks again to Johnny Martinez. I'm Randy Cardoon. That's Hot Rod Bob Beck. And uh, we will see you next time on Talking About Cars. So long. See ya. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thanks, Emily. We do appreciate it.
Like this show? Want more? Then head to WatchPTTV.com, the new 100% free PowerTube TV streaming network. Home of the best classic and new motorsports racing and build shows on the web.